We know brain tumors are hard to treat and frequently and tragically they find a way to return. But researchers at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, well, they have pinpointed a way that they say to stop the spread of the cancer in its tracks. It's a discovery that they claim could help doctors attack the root of some of the deadliest brain tumors that face us. Dr. Devi is an assistant professor at NYU School of Medicine and joins us with the details. This really sounds like exciting news because, man, glioblastomas especially in my family we've had experience in this once wow. once it once it hits it seems almost almost impossible to stop yeah, so the life expectancy once someone's been diagnosed, the average is about 15 months, which mm. is a very short mm -hmm. time, and only about a third or less than a third of people survive for after two years. I mean, one of the things that makes it so hard to treat glioblastoma is that, you know, normally where you would do surgery, let's say, and remove the cancer, it's very tricky in the brain because you can't remove too much brain, you know, otherwise you'll have other problems. So here, the exciting development is that they actually found that the way that the cancer regrows or repairs itself when you remove it is that it has its own type of stem cells. So these are cells that basically take over and regenerate the cancer. And there are a couple different proteins that are associated with those stem cells. So they're called SOX2 and CDC20. But basically, those proteins go up when the cancer is able to regenerate itself. And these scientists have figured out that if they can actually knock out the CDC20, so to get rid of that protein, they could actually slow down the growth or repair of the glioblastoma. Uh, have they been able to reverse any, do you know? I mean, do you think this well, will be successful? I think, well, there's a lot of problems. So they were able to do this in the lab in, uh, in transgenic mice. So these are mm -hmm. mice that they can infect with cancer, actually, and then look to see how uh, they can stop the cancer afterwards. They're able to do it there, but there are a couple different challenges. So first, you know, they were able to do it in the lab, but they have to now try to do it in humans, right? And so they haven't done it in humans yet. Not yet. Okay. And then the second part is, you know, so what they're doing is they're blocking your stem cells, right, which is what allows you to heal yourself mm -hmm. or repair yourself. Well, you want to knock it out in the cancer, but you don't want to knock it out in the rest of the body. Otherwise, if you get injured, how will you heal yourself, right? So those are a couple of the challenges that they face. We have a photograph of them, uh, you know, working on this. My, the, you always hear about these different type of uh, solutions that they try to look at. You know, you've got the polio virus that, that was publicized a few weeks ago going into a brain tumor. What do they do and how do they do this to find out, to reach a point where they could have this type of discovery and be potentially successful? Well, so there are a lot of different steps in terms of looking at it. I mean, sometimes with viruses, especially with tumors and cancer, what you're thinking about is the same way that the virus infects us or infects our body and our cells. Maybe it can infect the tumor too and bring some of these medications or other things into the tumor and basically use that against the tumor. So there's a lot of different creative ways of trying to do this. And now they're trying something called RNA interference. That's the idea, this technique that they're going to look at to see can they infect the uh, or, you know, basically attack the glioblastoma with that method and leave the rest of the body alone. If I, do you think it's going to work? Uh, I think there's a lot of promise there, and I think especially with glioblastoma, a lot of our traditional treatments haven't been as helpful, whether it's surgery or radiation or chemotherapy, so I definitely think there's a lot of promise. You know, how long it will take, that's another, you know, that's a little bit harder question, but I think this is one of the exciting developments that we're seeing in that area. Well, we certainly hope it does, especially for those who've been affected by glios, that uh, they can get a breakthrough and try to sure. battle them. Dr. Devi, thank you so much, oh, as always. See you. You too. Arthel?